So on those, in those moments in which we say, you know, I just don't feel God. I don't feel God. My response is some days I don't either. You know, that's okay. It doesn't make you a, a pagan or it doesn't make you any less spiritual or, or any less loved. Uh, on those days, you just stand on the covenant. Jesus said, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. With you always to the end of the age. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And so what, what we begin to do is we begin to live in communion with God. How does somebody start recovering from loneliness? Mm. I would start by opening your mind to the possibility of a supernatural presence of God with you. Uh, would you. Would you open your mind just to the possibility that the one who made this knows your name and is closer to you than your next breath. Just open your mind to the possibility of that. The challenge of the society in which we've been raised uh, in, in Western civilization is that it is so secularized that we've, we've kind of sucked the supernatural out of it. You know, if you can't explain it, if you can't touch it, if you can't describe it, if you can't prescribe it, can't fix it, can't tweak it, then it's not real. Wow. You know, that's, that's the world in which we live in. We were not intended to live in that world, you know? We were intended to live in a world in which there are supernatural realities. There are angels all around us right now. Hmm. There are, they well, are. Well, think about uh, Adam and Eve. They walked with God. They walked with God. Evening. That's how we were supposed to yeah. live. And that's how we Could will. Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Just walked with him. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the way it was supposed to be. Yeah, not lonely. Nope. Not embarrassed. Yeah. Wow. They just knew the presence of God. Mm. How do you know, how do you, how do you get to know yeah. the presence of God? There are occasions in our life when we can truly sense the presence of God. There are occasions in our life in which we believe in the presence of God because he has promised to be with us. You know my lovely wife, Dina Lynn. Yes. <laughs> uh, we are a few months away from our 40th anniversary. We've been married a long time. That's a long time. Uh, it's, it's, you know what? To be married to me and, and Moses in the wilderness, 40 years, that's about the same. Yeah. About the same. Yeah. Now, some, some days and many days, I really feel married. I just feel her presence. I feel the romance. Even all these years later, she probably doesn't, but I do. But even with someone as beautiful as my wife, there are days that I, I, I don't feel married. I mean, I don't you know, have my heart moving at a fast rate. My, I don't get speechless when I see her, you know, some yeah. days we're just living life together, yeah. right? Now, are we more married on the days I feel her presence? No, no. We're just as married on the days the feeling is there as on the days it's not. I love the feeling. Mm -hmm. I love romantic evenings. I love uh, uh, everything that, that comes with being married to a wonderful woman. But the reason that feelings do not dictate the reality of her presence in my life is because a covenant has been made. A covenant has been made. And she said, I do. I said, I do. And from that moment on, from that moment on, uh, we've been a married couple. Now, take that and multiply that by several billion. Mm -hmm. Because when God makes a covenant, he's never going to break it. Right. So on those, in those moments in which we say, you know, I just don't feel God. I don't feel God. My response is some days I don't either. You know, that's okay. It doesn't make you a, a pagan or it doesn't make you any less spiritual or, or any less loved. Uh, on those days, you just stand on the covenant. Jesus said, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. With you always to the end of the age. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And so what, what we begin to do is we begin to live in communion with God. You know, we, we begin to live in communion with God. Uh, the big word for that in the Bible is sanctification. He, he changes us uh, from people of, the, of, of selfishness to be people of, who are saintly, sanctified, but we're becoming more and more holy. And, and we learn to hear from Him. We learn to sense Him. It's kind of like learning uh, to be married. You know, your first day after 
the wedding, uh, you have to start learning new habits. Mm -hmm. You're not used to having somebody around. You're not yeah. used to, you know, having to, you know, clean up or I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it's all that. Yeah. So for that person who says, I just don't feel the presence of God, I say, okay, that's fine. Take your feelings outside and give them a kick in the rear yeah. because they, they are not to be trusted. Right. What's to be trusted is the promise of God. Mm. So good. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.